Number 10. Spaceballs over the course of decades, humans have begun to clog up the Earth's surrounding area with space junk. Defunct projects, satellites, broken or discarded pieces of spacecrafts, it will become a serious problem at some point and it's beginning to show. There have been many instances now of strange metallic balls crashing into the ground and being found in multiple countries. Mexico, Spain, Vietnam, Namibia, Australia, and many others. They hurtle towards the Earth and some have crashed a little too close for comfort. Most of these mysterious objects seem to just be auxiliary fuel tanks from satellites that were discarded or crashed nearby, and they fell off early, landing in a completely different place than was planned. But some of these, like the one in Mexico, still require more investigation as they don't match any of the parts that we would have expected to be entering our atmosphere. This one even has an antenna and reportedly fell from the sky while making strange noises, but was not accompanied by any fire, like a lot of debris entering the atmosphere would have. So where did these things come from then? Number 9. WTF In 2013, the Catalina Sky Survey at the University of Arizona spotted an object in the night sky, and it seemed to have some weird properties. The object didn't move as though it was solid like rock, but it seemed to possibly be hollow, and it had a density of about 10% that of water, and it seemed to be about 6.5 feet in diameter large enough to house a person. But this didn't match any of the space junk that space agencies had been tracking for the previous years, and adding even more to the confusion, the object seemed to disappear from sight, and it was not seen again until two years later when it was officially given the name WT1190F, or WTF for short. Pretty fitting. Video and photos were taken of the object's re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, which was a scientific feat on its own, but the object was never recovered. It is assumed that it burned up from the immense heat of re-entry, but many people believe that it crashed into the ocean and whatever was inside was either captured or lies in wait at the bottom of the sea. Like those UFOs NASA admits that they found. Remember those? That was crazy. Number 8. Struck by a space rock. Alright, we've got two stories here, and you can either think of them as the result of a curse, or karma, or cosmic coincidence, but either way, these two women had a bad day. In 2001, Lottie Williams was exercising in a park in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when she looked up and saw a great ball of fire in the air. It was a rocket coming back towards Earth. She watched it approach, and as it got larger in the sky, she expressed her worry to her friends, but then it broke up into pieces, and it was no longer visible to her. A few moments later, she felt what she described as a tap on her shoulder, and and then something fell to the ground. This small blackened piece of metal had fallen from the rocket and just grazed her, and it could have been a lot worse, but she walked away being the first person to be hit by man-made space debris. But another woman was not as lucky. On November 30th, 1954, Ann Hodges was napping in her Alabama home when a piece of meteorite crashed through her roof and struck her in the side. It left a three foot wide hole in her roof and also left a massive bruise on her thigh and hand where she was hit. Luckily, the damages were only surface level, and though she went to the hospital the next night, it was because of her stress, not the injury. But if the space rock had been a few inches to the side, Ann would not have lived to tell the tale as the first person to be struck by a meteorite. I'm not sure if she's cursed with extremely bad luck or has really good luck. I'll leave that up to you. Number 7. Skylab Launched by NASA as the first American space station, Skylab was cursed with issues from the moment it launched. The station strapped to a Saturn V rocket sustained severe damage during its deployment, including the loss of the station's micrometeoroid shield and one of its main solar panels, requiring it to have the first ever repair to an object in space, which is pretty cool. But it was again hit with problems when one of the pieces destabilized from orbit earlier than expected and crashed back to Earth, but it doesn't stop there. Due to increased solar activity, Skylab actually ended up falling towards Earth a year earlier than it was supposed to. There was supposed to be a shuttle mission to boost it back into orbit, but the shuttle wasn't ready in time. In an international media frenzy, the Skylab crash was everywhere. People had shirts with targets, contests were made to bring pieces of the wreckage for cash prizes, and people waited for the show. Due to a 4% calculation error on re-entry, the station did not burn up as quickly as expected, and pieces fell into Australia only 300 miles from Perth in an almost completely unpopulated area. Man, talk about a crash and burn. These scientists missed the mark so many times it's impressive the thing even hit Earth. Number 6. 300 million year old machine part in 2013, a Russian man named Dmitry was adding coal to a fire when he noticed something strange. A shiny piece of metal was sticking out of the rock, and when he broke open the piece of coal, he found what seemed to be a piece of a metal bar with 
teeth, like a piece of a gear. When analyzed, it was found to be made of aluminum, with about 3% magnesium, an alloy that is not generally produced today. Not only that, but further examination shows machining marks, implying that it's a man-made piece, and it's similar to those that we may find in a modern microscope or other small machinery. But no one can explain how a seemingly man-made part appears in a piece of coal that was 300 million years old. So was this thing a remnant of a past unknown civilization? Maybe something from a time traveler or alien? One explanation is that it could have fallen to Earth from a meteorite all that time ago, but it wouldn't explain the fact that it seems man-made. This little hunk of metal continues to baffle scientists today. Number 5. Nuclear Nuisance The Cosmos 954 reconnaissance satellite launched by the Soviet Union in 1977 had some major issues. The launch went fine. Unlike Skylab, its deployment also went off without a hitch, and this long-term orbital satellite seemed like another mission success for the Soviet space program. It was meant to be circling the globe for years and years, but just three months later, the North American Aerospace Defense Command noticed the satellite making erratic maneuvers, changing the altitude of its orbit by up to 50 miles. And in secret meetings, the Soviet officials warned their US counterparts that they had lost control over the vehicle, and the system, which was intended to propel the spent nuclear reactor core into a safe disposal orbit had failed, and just four months after its launch it fell towards the Earth, right over Canada's Northwest Territories. The Soviets claimed that it had completely disintegrated upon re-entry, but that was not the case, as we discovered a 600 km path of debris leading through the country, and a huge portion of it was radioactive because they failed to launch the reactor out. We Canadians began Operation Morning Light, a recovery effort that lasted over a year and for which we billed the Soviet Union $6 million, though they only ever paid us three. Many small pieces of debris were collected as well as 12 large portions of the satellite, only two of which were not radioactive. Number 4. Proof of Panspermia The theory of panspermia is that life did not naturally begin on Earth, but that it began with microbes stuck in space ice that fell to Earth on meteorites, and the amount of debate around this topic is huge, and we have a few examples that may just prove the theory. The Polonarua meteorite was one that fell in Sri Lanka in 2012, and meteorites are always a good find, but this one was different. Twelve days after it was witnessed falling through the sky, a scientist published a paper stating that after studying some electronic on micrographs, his team discovered fossilized diatoms, microscopic phytoplankton inside the meteorite. In addition, his team of scientists reported in a separate article that they are, they are certain that it is a meteorite that originated from a comet that also contained living diatoms. The microbes were remarkably similar to those found on Earth, leading to a debate on whether it was simply contaminated from the Earth's surface. But there is another example with even stronger proof of microscopic alien life. In 2018, a meteorite landed on a frozen lake in Michigan, and when it was examined, thousands of organic compounds that were formed billions of years ago were found. It helped that the quick recovery, along with the cold temperature, kept the water inside frozen for studying. Research is still being done, but this find has thrown the scientific world for a loop. Hopefully the organisms don't leave us with some alien curse or disease. Number 3. The Chelyabinsk Meteor Many of us will remember the 2013 meteor that rocked the world. At 20 meters in diameter, it was the largest natural object to enter our atmosphere since the Tunguska event, which destroyed a wide, remote, forested, and, and very sparsely populated area of Serbia. The Chelyabinsk meteor also is the only meteor confirmed to have resulted in many injuries, though they were all from indirect causes. There are many videos of the event and they are truly terrifying, especially when you learn that the meteor was completely undetected until it entered our atmosphere, which caused worldwide panic. The flash as it began to burn up was brighter than the sun, and when it exploded midair, the energy output was equivalent to the atomic weapon used on Hiroshima, sending out a massive massive shockwave that damaged buildings and was felt and heard for hundreds of miles. All of the 1,500 people injured were hurt while running or from broken glass or other indirect factors of the meteor. There was even another meteor which was detected to have a close approach on the same day, which was 10 meters larger and flew by us only 16 hours later. Man, February 15th, 2013 was a busy day for meteors. Number 2. Oumuamua Discovered by the University of Hawaii's PanStars-1 telescope in 2017, Oumuamua is the first known interstellar object to visit our solar system. It was originally classified as a comet, but there were no signs of cometary activity after we witnessed it slingshot past the sun at a blistering speed of 196,000 miles per hour, or 87.3 kilometers per second. 
It was briefly classified as an asteroid until new measurements found it was accelerating slightly, which is very strange for any interstellar body. This massive cigar-shaped object is nearly a quarter mile long, or 400 meters, and its elongated shape is unlike anything we've witnessed in our solar system. Observation has shown that it may have come from the star system of Vega, though with the speed it was moving it would have taken over 300 million years to make the journey to our solar system, and Vega was nowhere near that position at that time, leading to further questions. Many scientists believe that this could actually be an alien superstructure, as its strange journey and acceleration are studied more and more. Paul Kotis, manager of the Center for Near-Earth Object Studies at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said that it's a strange visitor from a faraway star system, shaped like nothing we've ever seen in our own solar system neighborhood. Whether it's just an interstellar asteroid or someone coming to see what's up with Earth, we may never know, as it's being launched away from us after making a slingshot maneuver around our sun, the angle and trajectory of which some use as proof as the object being controlled or even driven by something. And finally, we reach our number one, the Hypatia Stone. The Hypatia Stone is one of the single greatest astronomical discoveries that we have ever made. Found in the Sahara Desert by Ali A. Barakat, this is no ordinary meteorite, but one that contains the remnants of a rare type of supernova. Some have even described it as a supernova in a bottle. Named after the ancient mathematician and astronomer Hypatia, who was the first female scholar in her field to have her life and accomplishments recorded, overcoming sexism in the process, scientists are still learning more about its origins. It's believed that the stone was born in what is known as a Type 1a supernova, a rare kind of supernova where a dying star or white dwarf begins to leach energy off of a nearby star and regains energy in the process. These so-called vampire stars circle each other, until the white dwarf has recovered enough energy to reignite the stellar reaction and explodes in a massive cloud of dust and pure energy, shooting things imbued with strange elements out into the ether. Measuring the metals found inside the stone is how we verified that it came from this kind of supernova, and that it crashed to Earth nearly 28 million years ago after being launched through space by the explosion. Having a supernova in our hands has helped us answer so many questions about the physics of space, but if you ask me if there was one interstellar item that could have an alien curse, it's the rock that contains pieces of a rare supernova. Sounds like something an alien from Doctor Who would need to power their death machine or something. Starting us off with number 10 are the missing ones. So there have been many conspiracy theories and real stories where the CIA has assassinated people, they've planned to kill people, they've made people go missing if they know too much. And I know the first thing that comes to mind when you think about these missing people is that they were obviously killed. I mean if they're gonna go to the effort of making someone vanish off the face of the earth then surely they'd just kill them. But what if they didn't? What if they transported them to a secret underground base at Area 51? We already know there are quite a few underground facilities at Area 51, so why can't a prisoner holding base be one of them? If you're locked up or trapped in Area 51, you're as good as dead according to the CIA anyway, since no one will ever know you're there or be able to find you or save you. It's the perfect non-violent solution where everyone wins, except of course the people locked up in Area 51. Sorry about that. Coming in at number 9, we have alien scientists. So I feel like with the amount of government cover ups over different plane and military craft crashes and their remains, I definitely believe Area 51 houses aliens and not just the dead remains of all the ones for observation. I'm talking proper communicative aliens that are helping human scientists. This may be far fetched, but considering people think a one world government operates at Area 51, that government would need a lot of alien tech for whatever their future plans of world domination are. So with that in mind, I think from these alien spacecraft crashes in the past, living aliens were safe from them and now they're here working for the US government either voluntarily or involuntarily. And they probably have Einstein level knowledge and then some, so I hope that the first people we saved when we went in there, I don't know, I haven't checked yet, but you probably would have by the time this goes up, so let me know. At number 8 we have the getaway sources. So say the whole world is going to right now, say there's been like a zombie apocalypse or something more realistic like climate change, tipping point or a food shortage or a disease epidemic or something, or a 2012 scenario where like the earth is literally breaking apart. People need to run, they need to survive and in this scenario forget us mere citizens, they're not worried about us. The people that they'd want saved are the leaders, the president, the very rich and the people with power. And like in the movie 2012, this top 1% had a secret base in China where they would be safe from everything. 
Similarly, I think the same sort of thing is located in Area 51 in the form of getaway flying saucers. Think about it. The only way to save yourself from this planet, from the horrors of it, is just to simply leave the planet. And what better way to do that than on highly advanced spacecraft with aliens or extraterrestrials you've been making this plan and deal with for the past century. It's like the perfect escape. Us peasants just get to die on Earth and Trump's out here making planet Pluto great again. Filling our number 7 slot are the bodies. So we've heard of the BBC crew that got into the base and were basically pointed at with guns and forced to stay on the floor for hours. There are signs all around and leading up to the base saying you'll get shot if you try and trespass onto the base, but of course in kinder words because they can't just outright say we'll shoot you. I suspect there have been many people that have managed to make it into the base and some were definitely shot and that wasn't publicised because it makes the government look bad. Some probably did make it somehow but were hiding on the ground under some major camouflage and I suspect they were either found out and then killed, stayed hiding there because hiding there was still better than trying to leave, getting spotted and then getting shot. All in all, I suspect there are quite a few skeletal remains to be found in Area 51. I feel like the families of those people are still like, where did they go? They went to get groceries and they never returned. Now at number 6 are alien offspring. I feel like any alien still at Area 51 right now is either dead and there for observation or working there involuntarily or locked up. Honestly, let's be real, none of them actually want to be there when they could be at home with their families on planet Glip. Like, let's be real. So with that being said, I'm sure there have been many escape plans executed by them, maybe some even self-sacrificed, not wanting to tell the evil humans their secrets, or because they simply couldn't take being on Earth. Earth anymore. So to combat that and ensure the longevity of the alien link, I really believe the heads in charge definitely got them to reproduce and cloned those eggs or fetuses so they'd have a whole armory of aliens if the existing one successfully left or whatever the hell escaped, died, blew up, self detonated, I don't really know. Coming in at number 5 are star cross lovers. I feel like this has to happen without fail when two people or entities from totally different upbringings and backgrounds meet and hate each other at first and then they fall in love. In this case, I'm talking about an alien and one of the Area 51 workers. So as I previously mentioned, there are most likely aliens living at Area 51 who can communicate with us, so I feel like one of the workers, if not more, who interact with them daily have probably fallen in love with one. You know how it goes, it would have started off like, what the hell are you, and vice versa. Then it would have been like, okay, let me just quickly do my job and then leave. Then it would have moved on to things like telling each other bits and pieces about their own lives. Then in a moment of laughter, one of them realizes, wait, I'm head over heels in love with them. And then comes the confession of love, then the no, we're too different, it'll never work, the CIA won't let you be with me, and my parents on planet Yip Ju will never allow this. And then they get over it and have a secret romance until one of them has to kill the other, Hunger Game style. And if you weren't just sucked into that love story so hard, then you're definitely lying. At number 4 are dinosaurs. Hear me out, I know you're gonna think I'm ridiculous, but I'm not. Maybe a little bit. So there is no proof that says aliens came after us. If anything, we've seen signs in cave drawings from God knows what BC indicating that alien sightings have been occurring for a long, long time. So who's to say they weren't around during the Cretaceous period and prior? What if they were flying in and out of Earth during the period dinosaurs roamed the Earth? It's not like dinosaurs could record that aliens were visiting, and even if they did somehow, they were wiped out anyway, so there's that. But what if aliens found them interesting? Interesting. What if they're like, ooh, what is that? What if they stole and preserved some eggs here and there like Jurassic Park? If they were smart, honestly, if it was me, I would have gotten one of each gender for each species of dinosaur. And if they did, who's to say they weren't forced to share that at Area 51 after being captured from a crash? What if they wanted to share the knowledge? Pretty sure dinosaurs have a better chance of surviving on Earth where there's oxygen than on planet Zeus where there's none. It could be the alien human dino alliance. I had her for short. Filling like Anim 3 slot are clothes. Okay, so there's a huge debate about whether cloning is ethical or not. I mean, honestly, yes, it is weird. It's creepy to have someone or something that looks exactly the same as something else, yet their personalities are completely different. It's strange, I get it. We've successfully cloned animals throughout history, but humans is something we've never done. Most countries in the world actually ban cloning anyway, so there's that, but there's a bunch of states in the US that don't specifically ban cloning, but ban reproductive cloning. So if human technology can achieve it, maybe alien technology can and has? What if there are clones just walking around Area 51 and we have no idea about it? What if they've cloned prime ministers and other world leaders to make it easier to make appearances when really the real Theresa May is on planet Clintarb? What if? What if they're in there cloning humans and aliens? There are just so many what ifs. Am I a clone? 
Who knows? Now at number two are the cures. So again, this one is problematic to talk about, but somebody's got to do it. That someone's gonna be me. <laughs> Many people believe that the government injects diseases into the public, which creates an epidemic. Many thought that of the Ebola outbreak in Africa a few years ago as well. Some think the government is behind it to control population numbers, whereas others think they do it to distract from a bigger story going on underneath. Whichever story you want to believe, if the government created the disease, they also created the cure to it, and I believe those cures are stored in Area 51. And I even believe they have the cure to other things like AIDS and cancer in there as well. You know how they say the pharmaceutical industry makes the most money because they keep you sick? If you weren't sick, they wouldn't be making money, so they don't even want a cure to be found. But what if it's already been found? They're just not releasing it so the economy can gain more money for all these people that do have these illnesses. Sadistic, and it's all there in Area 51. I hope when you guys read it, and you found it. And finally, at number one is Osama bin Laden. Laden. Very controversial, I know, and of course, I don't mean any disrespect by putting him on the list, but again, I'm not gonna pussyfoot around any topic on this channel. So the news broke in May of 2011 that Bin Laden had been found in a compound and killed by a CIA-led operation. That's all we know, that's all we got told. And I've been hearing about this conspiracy for years now that he actually wasn't killed. Like, did we ever see his dead body? No, we didn't. They said they identified his body many ways by his height, while many people out there are 6'4", Apparently one of his wives was shouting his name during the raid and again that could have just been a body double and someone paying an impoverished woman to just shout a name. It's not that hard. His burial took place at sea and it wasn't documented. According to a US official there are pictures of his body and the burial but where they at though? So no one other than the people involved saw his apparent assassination and burial so people believe that well one they didn't actually kill him, two they killed a lookalike because that could be possible it's happened in the past, or three he's being hidden in Area 51 till his death. So, I mean, there's some food for thought. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have space energy. While a team of astronomers was working to map out the universe, which for a second, imagine that's your job. What a task. Anyway, while they were doing this, they found a very mysterious object that is sending out bursts of energy every 20 minutes. This object is somewhere around 4,000 light years away, but despite this distance, it was sending out energy bursts that were so big that it was one of the largest radio sources in the entire sky. That's no easy feat. These energy bursts were occurring in a cycle where one would happen for one minute every 20 minutes before it would disappear for a few hours and then this whole thing would repeat over again. There is nothing that we know of in this universe right now that would behave like this, so at the moment, while there are of course many hypotheses and theories, this is a mystery waiting to be uncovered. In our number 9 spot today we have 2022 AE1. Just a few months ago in January, as the year began, scientists were watching an asteroid dubbed 2022 AE1 that became the riskiest one observed in over a decade. The initial observations of this asteroid placed it impacting with Earth on roughly July 4th, 2023, which would mean that there would not be enough time to deflect it, and this asteroid was large enough to do some real damage should it strike an area. Yeah, it was most definitely a cause for concern. There was a week where the moon outshone this asteroid and so experts weren't able to see it and continued tracking its path, but once the moon was out of this phase, the risk seemed to have diminished. As of now, this asteroid has been taken off of the risk list, but who knows? It seems as though things can change quite quickly and unexpectedly outside the cozy home and protection of our atmosphere. In our number 8 spot today, we have a meteorite. On February 28th, 2021, reports came pouring in from across the UK of an unusual streak of light that was seen in the sky. These reports were far behind the UK's Fireball Alliance, though, as their cameras had already picked up the signal and they were already in the midst of estimating its landing site. That's right, this streak of light was a meteor if the title didn't give it away. It's a remnant of our early solar system that has been flying through space at unbelievable speeds until it came down through our atmosphere and ended its long, awesome journey scattered in a bunch of pieces across rural Gloucestershire. Teams were sent out to be responsible for the recovery of the extraterrestrial material, which was found in a family's driveway as well as in a sheep's field nearby. This meteorite is a rare specimen known as primitive carbonaceous chondrite, which is said to contain materials that have 
have been essentially unaltered since the formation of the solar system four and a half billion years ago. The pieces of this meteorite can give us insights into the building blocks of the planets, and it can potentially give us clues as to how the Earth came to be this wonderful planet that possesses all of the resources necessary to sustain human life. In our number seven spot today, we have King Tut's meteorite. So I actually learned about this one from Taylor, since he's the little history bee, and it is so interesting. Quite recently, researchers made quite the discovery that actually solved a mystery surrounding a dagger that once belonged to King Tut 3,400 years ago. An analysis of the king's weapon found that it was actually forged out of meteorite just outside of Egypt. That is so cool. This whole artifact and the way it was forged is one of the greatest mysteries in history. It is exceptionally unusual in the fact that it was made out of iron, which is a material that the Egyptians would not begin to smelt for another 500 years. This was just one of the many treasures that was found within his tomb, and one that continues to add to the incredible accomplishments of the ancient Egyptians. In our number six spot today, we have Tabby's star. This star, which has also been referenced as the WTF star, is an F-type main sequence star, which is located in the constellation Cygnus, about 1,470 light years away from Earth. This star is of particular importance because of the fact that it shows unusual light shifts, which includes a 22% dimming in brightness. Basically, from our point of view, something continually blocks the star, and it likely isn't a planet because a Jupiter sized planet would only block about 1% of the star the size of this one, so what could it possibly be? There are a few theories out there surrounding this anomaly, but none are able to fully explain what is happening here. Some believe that it is some sort of uneven ring of dust orbiting the star, and others believe that the star's luminosity fluctuates depending on the efficiency of the heat being transported to its photosphere. These are just two of the theories surrounding this star, but there are many more out there, and at this point, we just don't know. Hopefully though, the James Webb Telescope, which was launched at the end of last year, will be able to get a more clear clear picture of what may be happening over there on Tabby's star. In our number 5 spot today, we have new material. Of course, when meteorites show up to Earth, people are dying to get their hands on them to study them and see what all they contain. We get some pretty incredible deliveries of things that arrive on meteorites, and analysis has been able to identify about 300 minerals in different space debris that comes down to Earth, and 40 of those are ones that have only been found in meteorites. This is all very cool and interesting, but one of the most fascinating fascinating is the Allende meteorite. This is one that exploded over Mexico in 1969, and after analyzing samples from it, in 2012, scientists announced the discovery of a material that had never been seen on Earth, and that frankly, no one knew was even possible to make. It was called pangite, and it consists of quite a strange variety of elements, including titanium, zirconium, and scandium. In our number four spot today, we have CFBD SIR 2149. Ah, yeah. Yes, the rogue planet with the easiest name to remember. This planet really had the scientific community on edge in 2012. This is because most of the planets we are familiar with orbit a star. I mean, look at the one we're most familiar with. We clearly and thankfully do. That's not the case for this guy though. CFBD SIR 2149 seems to just be drifting across space without any sort of star. This planet is also huge. It is thought to be seven times more massive than Jupiter, and Jupiter is quite a bit more massive than Earth. This isn't necessarily anything that we need to worry about. I mean, we're at home in our solar system with our star, not wandering around the universe or galaxy, so that's good. I mean, let's just hope it stays that way. Astronomers believe that there are likely billions of rogue planets and that they might even outweigh the amount of planets that have suns. In our number three spot today, we have shooting stars. Okay, so we often look to the night sky in an attempt to see a shooting star, and the chances might be pretty good depending on how light polluted the area is. I mean, either that or you're seeing one of the Starlink satellites, but either way, we know that shooting stars aren't really stars at all and are instead meteors burning up as they move quickly through Earth's atmosphere. But what if I told you that there really are some shooting stars that are actually stars? Hypervelocity stars were discovered by astronomers in 2005, and it is thought that they occur, or form, when a binary star system, or a star system that has two stars, gets destroyed by a black hole. One of the stars in the system will usually fall into the black hole, which just may send the other one flying across through space as fast as millions of miles per hour. It's definitely not the same thing that we 
we think of when we think of shooting stars, but it is quite the galactic event. In our number two spot today, we have Kassars. If you aren't exactly familiar with them, they are super compact objects that kind of have a star-like appearance as they are very luminous, and it is thought that these guys are powered by supermassive black holes. So there's obviously quite a few interesting things about these, but one of the most interesting is in relation to one in particular called APM 0827952255. This one contains a black hole that is surrounded by a vapor cloud, and within the cloud is 140 trillion times the amount of water on the Earth. It's the largest water reservoir ever discovered. That's insane. Researchers believe that this giant watery cloud formed long, long ago, just 1.6 billion years after the universe itself. In our number one spot today, we have Stardust. Just a few years ago, researchers in Australia made a startling discovery. Ancient grains that were discovered inside of a meteorite that had landed inside of the country were studied and it was revealed that they were actually grains of stardust. This dust was formed somewhere from five to seven billion years ago, and it is now the oldest solid material ever found on Earth. These kinds of pre-solar grains are a very rare find. In fact, they're so rare that they're only found in about 5% of meteorites that have fallen to Earth. This is a fascinating discovery because having something like this really is the next best thing aside from having the actual star itself, and it gives insight into our universe billions and billions of years ago. Number 10, NASA's Flying Frog. We'll kick this list off with one of my favorite photos from history. Ever. On September 13th, 2011, NASA's Lighty spacecraft lifted off from Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. Now, to witness a spacecraft take off and go to space, it's amazing, right? People travel across the country to hopefully catch a glimpse of this experience, right? Now, one frame of this specific launch, one photo here, shows an airborne frog just flying, he's spread eagle just in the air, no idea how he got there. The team behind the launch confirms that this photo is real. Can you imagine what's going through his mind right now during this photo? In fact, what was he doing five seconds before this launch was ignited? Just sitting on a throttle booster, eating a fly, he's like, man, what can go wrong? Life, you know? If you ever have the chance to check out a NASA launch, keep your head up, it might rain frogs depending where you are. Number nine. Planet Nine. With James Webb in the picture, we're seeing more of our universe now than ever. For a while now, astronomers have been confident about a ninth planet orbiting the sun. Now this ninth planet is hiding far behind Neptune, so we haven't seen it, obviously. We've been here before though, it's hard to tell the scale of these things. The largest asteroid in the solar system was discovered back in 1801, and that day it was initially classified as a planet. But just like Pluto, it was, you know, kicked out of the planet party. Get out of here, you're too small for us. Must be this tall to be a planet. Peace. Talk about this ninth planet began in 2014 when American astronomer, Dr. Scott Shepard, he found a small dwarf planet candidate called 2012 VP113. And the orbit of this dwarf planet was too large. It didn't make any sense. Something had to be assisting this colossal spin. For the planet to be acting this way, it would have to be 10 times more massive than our planet here, Earth, and it would take at least 10,000 years to orbit the sun just once. So, happy new year, I guess. And considering that it's tucked far behind Neptune, this ninth planet is around 200 times further out than ours. So far, we've covered about 30% of the prime area this planet could be in, and every space fact that I do, I also feel so anxious right after. Holy smokes, space is so scary. Number eight. Bermuda Triangle of Space. Awesome, we love these. If you thought the Bermuda Triangle here on Earth was jarring, buckle up. Turns out they got one in space as well. Awesome, great. I feel the space anxiety in my chest today. A handful of astronauts have experienced this in real life while orbiting our planet. They call it the South Atlantic Anomaly and it's part of the Earth's magnetic field. And many scientists have connected this triangle to the Van Allen radiation belts. So right above the South Atlantic, when the International Space Station passes through this area, computers often stop working and astronauts will sometimes experience cosmic flashes in their eyes. That's terrifying. The Hubble has also glitched out when trying to take observations, so 
What's going on here in this weird triangle? Who knows? Maybe it's the Illuminati that Kanye's talking about. Number seven, Elst Pizarro. This next one is quite bizarro. First discovered in 1979, its orbit in the asteroid belt led to it being classified initially as an asteroid. Yet when it was examined more closely in 1996, it showed itself to have a tail like a comet. We love an evolving space rock, I guess. Keep changing, keep confusing us, sure. What possibility, maybe, there was a collision at some point and that crash ended up exposing some subsurface ice on the body, which is slowly now being lost to space. So now it's whipping by, which explains the new tale. Else Pizarro was an asteroid and then a comet, and then once its layers have melted off, now it could be just a plain old boring asteroid. Again, we're not too sure here. Else Pizarro got the zoomies for a hot minute, but we're not sure why. Experts had hoped to launch the Castalia spacecraft in 2028 to get a better look, but since 2016, the European Space Agency hasn't had any funding to give this project the green light, so we'll never know probably. Awesome. What's Elon doing? Can we send him up? Take a look. Number six, Scotland Fireball. What's believed to be space junk belonging to Elon Musk, this fireball seen crashing down over Scotland and Northern Ireland has experts scratching their heads. The fireball was visible for 20 seconds around 10 p.m. on September 14th. Reminder, this was only a couple of months ago, so you might remember it. There were around 1,200 reports on the ball, including 10 videos. The UK media network wrote on Twitter the next day stating, quote, we have checked the Starlink deorbit and it would have not have come anywhere near the UK. At this point, we cannot find any known space junk or satellite deorbit that could account for this fireball. We are looking at the data again, end quote. This lasted 20 seconds where a meteor would be much, much shorter. Any theories as to what this was? I know a lot of our viewers live around this area, so comment down below if you witnessed Optimus Prime's arrival two months ago. Number five. Michigan Lights. If you're a fan of the series Unsolved Mysteries over on Netflix, this next one here should ring a familiar bell. March 8th, 1994, more than 300 911 calls were made, all of which were reporting strange lights in the night sky right along the eastern shore of Lake Michigan. That is way too close to our home right now. That's terrifying. I was born in 1994 as well, so who knows? Maybe I was dropped off by aliens. These objects, these UFOs in question, were described as round like disks, or they were like floating spheres. Both jarring descriptions. They all had different colored lights as well, so planes are obviously out of the question. It's been so long now that the case has finally found its way to Netflix. So no, it is still not solved. Number four, Steve. Nice, an unexplainable light in the sky named Steve. This sounds Canadian already. Back in 2018, this mystery came to light. There's a light in the sky in Canada and scientists still have no idea what it is. All they know is that they call it Steve. Steve is short for Strong Thermal Emission Velocity Enhancement. Now, Steve's appearance, I can't lie, he is beautiful. He's gorgeous to look at. Steve looks like a white purplish ribbon that stretches throughout the sky, almost like the Northern Lights, only scientists are sure that Steve is not an aurora. It's very hot and it doesn't last long. Classic Steve, doesn't last long, eh? Must be Canadian. Number three, Hodges Meteorite. Now these meteorites, they can happen pretty often, but luckily most of the time it doesn't wipe out everybody and everything. That's pretty good. Sorry, dinosaurs, thanks for taking one for the team for us. Back in 1954, residents in Talladega County, Alabama, noticed a ball of fire heading towards them. Now, we didn't have Twitter, we couldn't warn people that maybe a meteor was about to hit and wipe us out forever, and we also didn't really know how to tell if meteorites were coming and how scary it was, so it was alarming. Especially for Anne Elizabeth Hodges, who got hit by that said space rock. Yeah, that ball of fire that we always see going through the sky, that hit her, it grazed her hip. Now you may be asking, was she outside stargazing at this point? Was she doing some cosmic ritual? No, she was napping in her living room and then an eight pound chunk of meteorite smashed through her roof and again, only grazed her hip. She got grazed by a meteorite and then received a bruise. First human to ever get hit by a meteorite and probably the last. What a flex that is. Imagine putting that on Tinder. Number two, go fast. Okay, a bit more modern now. This one was trending recently, but it was originally recorded back in 2015. It was part of that big alien leak that we got to witness over the pandemic. That was fun. That was just what we needed. Middle of the pandemic, the news is like, hey, check out these UFOs also. We don't know. Good luck. Now, what you're seeing here is an FA-18 Super Hornet following a UAP. Now, we don't call them UFOs anymore because that's so M. Night Shyamalan, all right? We don't do that. 
We call them UAPs, also sounds a little smarter. US Navy personnel caught this UAP flying along the East Coast, and there was no exhaust, there was no wings, just a really fast sphere, almost like I mentioned earlier. A 45 foot long egg, 25,000 feet above the Atlantic, just whipping, and it flew away, and nobody saw it ever since. Do we think UFOs are balls like spheres? I think that's the new thing. We went from disks to spheres. Finally, number one, Uranus tilts. Jokes aside, and you best believe I had about 20 ready, we're still trying to figure out why Uranus rotates on its side, when every other planet has their axis pointing upwards, right? Uranus's tilt is 98 degrees, so there's long periods of time, like 40 years long, where the north or south pole will just face the sun directly. It'll just, it'll just grill the sun for 40 years straight. Perfect place to get your tan on. The other pole, not so much. They're gonna be pale for 40 years, like my dad. Other planets in our solar system, they have a prograde rotation. Now Venus, that has a retrograde rotation. But why? What's going on here? So far, our leading theory is that something massive may have hit these planets many, many moons ago, early in their planet life. Scientists believe that Uranus was hit by a meteor and completely threw it off course. Gotta be careful, gotta watch, gotta watch Uranus, right? Hit that thumbs up for Uranus. Starting us off at number 10, the Caden meteorite. While it may not have been the biggest meteorite to crash into the Earth, it certainly raised many questions once it was here. On December 30th, 1980, what looked like a fireball was seen in the sky hurling its way towards the Soviet military base. Now, upon impact, they discovered a surprisingly small stone weighing only about four pounds, but it was what was inside the stone that caused a commotion. Inside the meteorite was a wide range of incredibly rare and unique minerals, many of which are not found in nature, causing quite a bit of confusion and debate around the stone's origins. Some scientists believe it originated from the Martian moon of Phobos, but no one really knows for certain. While there have been several meteorites from Mars to land on Earth, if suspicions are true, the Caden would be the first Martian moon rock to be found on Earth. And who knows what that could mean. Next up at number Number nine, a piece of the moon. As fate would have it, a piece of the moon made its way into the desert of Morocco, and in 2014, it was discovered and sold privately to a collector. The moon chunk weighed about six pounds and was extremely rare, as very few pieces of lunar material have been known to crash land onto the planet. Now, as cool as this seems, scientists have discovered that moon dust can cause huge health risks, and long term exposure is highly toxic and has the potential to even cause death. So whoever has this piece of moon rock better have it sealed tight because it could be the end of them. Next up at number eight, Tomana Wos. To understand the craziness of this meteorite, we have to rewind a few billion years. Well, 4.5 billion years to be exact. Meteorites are usually made of iron and nickel. These iron and nickel atoms were formed inside stars that eventually exploded, sending the elements rocketing across the nebula. Over time, the elements were forced together to create what we call protoplanets, which were the first planet-like orbs of the solar system. Now, 4.5 billion years ago, Tomanawos was at the core of one of these protoplanets, but at some point in time, likely collided with another protoplanet, sending huge chunks back into space. Then, 17,000 years ago, it crashed down into the Earth and landed on an ice cap in Canada. It wasn't discovered until thousands of years later, and by that time, it had made quite the journey down to Oregon. The 15 ton rock caused quite a storm and even a lawsuit when in 1902 a man tried to steal it from the indigenous people and charge others to see the strange and mysterious space rock. But the joke was on him as the Oregon Iron and Steel Company actually owned the land where he'd found the meteorite and sued for its return. Whatever it was, there was something about this meteorite that drew people in. And who knows, maybe it really was cursed. Next up at number seven, a strange black object. In July of this year, Australian farmer Mike Miners was doing his usual morning survey of his farm when all of a sudden he spotted something that caught his eye. There in the distant part of the grasslands was a large jet black object measuring roughly nine feet and sticking straight up out of the ground. Unsure of what was going on, he took a closer look at the object and eventually decided to 
call the Civil Aviation Safety Authority to see if they could help. Once he was on the phone with them, they quickly urged him to call NASA directly. Eventually, it was discovered to be a piece of space junk, likely from the SpaceX Dragon capsule, but many conspiracy theorists didn't seem to buy this answer, believing it to be some kind of remnant from a UFO. And to tell you the truth, I have no idea if those conspiracy theorists are losing their minds or if they are onto something, but anything that is falling from outer space will always freak me out. Coming in at number 6, the microscopic diamond. There are many things people can expect to find falling from the sky, but tiny microscopic space diamonds would not be at the top of my list. Back in 1969, an unexpected meteorite came crashing down into Mexico, which led to one of the biggest manhunts trying to find all the scattered fragments. One of the strange finds were small diamond fragments containing, now stay with me here, isotopic signatures of materials formed prior to the existence of our solar system. Which listen, I'm not really blessed with much of a science brain, but essentially it's really freaking crazy what they found. The origins of the diamond is up for debate. There are two theories about how they came to be. The first is the formation inside a giant star that long ago exploded in a supernova, and the second is from an asteroid impact in space, but either way, it's an incredibly strange find that raised more questions upon its discovery than it answered. Next up at number 5, a molten object. Maybe it was aliens, or maybe it's some cursed artifact from outer space, but either way, no one had any clue what they'd found. Back in 2016, an inexplicable molten object fell from the sky in Siberia and was actually caught on film. Two YouTubers said they received the footage from a witnessing Russian man and wasted no time posting the video for all to see. Whatever it was was covered in green flames, an unrecognizable white foamy substance and grabbed the attention of local firemen who can be seen attempting to put out the giant and strange green flames. Many online viewers were quick to try and figure out what exactly they were witnessing, and some said it was probably a satellite that fell onto the earth, but some swear they saw a UFO hovering over Turkey just three days prior and believe the object to have been the crashed extraterrestrial ship. Maybe the aliens were trying to send us a message? Let's just hope it was a crashed satellite. Coming in at number four, fireballs. There are few things that make us worry about the end of days more than giant fire orbs raining down from the sky and terrorizing our planet. Well, in September of 2019, it seemed like just that was happening in Chile when huge and mysterious flaming objects lit up the sky cascading over the largest island in Chile, horrifying the locals. The fireballs plummeted to the earth and caused seven bushfires across the island, though luckily no one was injured. Initially, most assumed it was meteorites crashing down, but after a few days inspecting the site, no traces were found at any of the seven locations. Officials were confused by the findings as the only other logical explanation would be space debris, but that as well seemed to have been ruled out by many. So if it wasn't a meteorite and it wasn't a rogue piece of space debris, what could have fallen from the sky? Could it have anything to do with an unknown space civilization? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Coming in at number 3, Metal Shreds Long before Chile saw the flaming balls of fire crashing down, Argentina was met with an equally terrifying phenomenon. Back in 1991, out of nowhere, giant shards of flaming metal appeared glowing in the sky. The ominous showers appeared to be darting down towards the planet terrifying the locals. This metallic rain turned out to be fragments from a Russian space station named the Salyut 7, which to this day is still considered to be one of the largest human-made objects to re-enter the atmosphere. Now, of course, engineers made many attempts to guide the fragments toward the Atlantic Ocean, but as the station was in a low orbit to the planet, they were not really able to properly redirect anything. So soon the 88,000 pounds of metal were crashing down to the Earth, and although no one was injured, it certainly terrorized all who witnessed it. Coming in at number 2, Vladimir Komarov. Infamously known as the man who fell from space, Vladimir was a famous Russian astronaut, or 
or cosmonaut as they were called during the Cold War space race. Back in 1967, he embarked on a crazy mission that although he was completely trained to complete, was ultimately rushed. Allegedly, the spacecraft had a multitude of structural issues, and despite engineers warning the Soviet officials that the craft was not ready, they continued with the mission as planned. Vladimir took off and made his way up into the eternity of space and even executed 16 orbits around the Earth. But something went awry with his mission, so he was instructed to make his way back down to Earth. However, things went south upon trying to re-enter the atmosphere when his parachute would not engage, and Vladimir plummeted back towards the Earth, crashing in a horrific explosion. Rumor has it that while he was plummeting to his fate, he was screaming at the Soviets for forcing him to do this mission. And while he may not have been something that originated from space, it was certainly cursed from the very beginning of its journey. And last up in our number one spot, the Roswell incident. Back in 1947, a huge metallic object crashed down on the earth causing a major uproar for conspiracy theorists across the globe. Now, normally I'm not one to jump on the conspiracy wagon, but I don't know how anyone can look me in the eye and tell me that this is not the spitting image of a flying saucer. I mean, come on. Now, here is where it gets crazy. After the dust from the initial sighting settled, the Roswell Air Force released a statement admitting that they had found a flying disc, but then quickly retracted that statement saying instead it was simply a conventional weather balloon and have stuck to this story ever since. But this change in description caused many to believe the government was covering up valuable information. Then in 1979, Lieutenant Jesse Marcel, a key figure in the whole debacle, was interviewed for a documentary about the incident and admitted that despite what they told newspapers in 1947, that he truly believed it was an extraterrestrial entity that was found that day and that the government had ordered him to keep quiet. Now, that isn't suspicious at all. So what do you guys think? Government weather balloon or top secret alien spaceship? Starting off in our number 10 spot we have Dragonfly 44. This is what is called an ultra diffuse galaxy and it is located in the Kama Cluster. This galaxy is of concern because of some interesting observations that were made in relation to it back in 2016. Basically this galaxy was first discovered because of the influence it is having on our Milky Way galaxy. Astronomers noticed some strange sort of ripples in our galaxy and some subsequently realized that this was due to the pull of Dragonfly 44's gravity as it orbited around our own. Of course, once it was realized that this galaxy was the culprit, experts started looking into the galaxy more, and that is when it was realized that this galaxy is actually quite dark. In fact, we can only really see this galaxy due to four bright stars that shine out of the otherwise dark, gloomy galaxy. This has led to the hypothesis that this galaxy must be largely made of dark matter. This is extremely interesting because not only is dark matter one of the most pressing mysteries of space, but this galaxy was found to be made up of 99.99% dark matter. Some even say that this galaxy shouldn't even really be able to hold itself together with so few stars. This is all to say that this galaxy is extremely interesting, and with further investigation and research, it may just be the key that helps us understand what in the world dark matter really is, and what it's made of. In our number 9 spot today we have cosmic disappearance. Some sort of unidentified thing that is larger than anything in our known universe is sucking portions of the Milky Way away. I know, it's terrifying and it definitely is concerning considering it's the place that we all call home. This discovery came in 2009 when researchers first found a cluster of galaxies moving at extremely fast speed towards a small area of sky. This area is located between the constellations of Centaurus and Vela and whatever this whole thing is, it has experts completely stumped as to what it could be. For now, it remains a space mystery that has been dubbed Dark Flow so that I can sit on the shelf with the other terrifying space mysteries like Dark Energy and Dark Matter, whatever those are. In our number 8 spot today we have Tycho. This is what is being called a zombie star. This frightening name comes from the fact that this star was once a white dwarf, which is basically what is left over after a star exploded, but its mass was not enough to become a neutron star or a black hole. What's different about these zombie stars, however, is that they have gobbled up a bunch of mass from another nearby 
nearby star, which then leads to them exploding all over again in what is called a Type 1A supernova. These blasts are insanely luminous and bright. Some even say that they have the light of one billion suns. This is all to say that they are insanely interesting objects and events that exist in the universe, and they are also thought to be helping scientists study what the heck dark energy is. In our number 7 spot today, we have Oumuamua. A few years ago, scientists all agreed that we had found an object that was flying through our solar system, and they called it Oumuamua, and it was widely agreed that it was an interstellar comet that had swung out from around another star. Upon closer examination, however, they realized that something was propelling it and causing it to accelerate, and this is when the debate started, because they just don't really know why. Evie Loeb, who's a Harvard University astrophysicist, proposed the idea that rather than a comet, this could be an alien probe that is being pushed by a light sail, which is a very wide but extremely thin piece of material that accelerates by being pushed by solar radiation. Other scientists didn't agree with this and instead said that it's possible that hydrogen ice could have melted off of the object in a way that would mimic a rocket engine or something of that nature. Avi then wrote in a study that hydrogen ice is too easily heated and it would have melted off long before it reached our solar system. I guess all in all we just have to wait it out while the scientists debate and gather more evidence to really know what is going on behind this one. In our number 6 spot today we have the wandering moon. The moon is apparently, slowly, sadly, moving away from earth. When I say slowly, I mean slowly as it's at a rate of about half an inch a year, but still, when we're talking about our cosmic best buddy, the moon isn't only the thing that lights up our night sky, the moon plays a vital role to our lives here on earth due to its great companionship and its gravitational pull. The moon's gravity is what causes the tides of our ocean, so without our moon, who knows what would happen to our marine ecosystems. The moon is also responsible for the axial tilt of earth and how it stays in relatively the same place. Without the moon, we either wouldn't have any tilt at all, or we would be tilted all the way. This would mean that we would either have no seasons, or some of the most extreme seasons any of us have ever seen. While it doesn't appear the moon is going anywhere soon, sometimes we just have to keep an eye on her to make sure. In our number 5 spot today, we have the mysterious gap. Basically, a new analysis by scientists at MIT of ancient meteorites found something new and super interesting. In the early solar system, there was what is referred to as a protoplanetary disk of dust and gas that rotated around the sun, and eventually it coalesced into the planets that we know and love today. So this new study and analysis suggests that this sort of mysterious gap existed within this disk somewhere around, I don't know, 4.567 billion years ago, and it was in an area near where the asteroid belt is today. The reason this gap is mysterious is because it isn't quite clear what the cause of this gap was. There are a few possibilities, including Jupiter, during the time when it began to take its shape, because of its extremely large gravitational pull, it could have pushed gas and dust towards the outskirts, which then would leave a gap in the developing disk. There are other possibilities, but regardless of whatever caused this gap, it is said to have likely served as a cosmic boundary that kept material on either side from interacting with each other. In our number 4 spot today, we have a Blitzar. So normally, when stellar black holes are formed, they are the result of a large star exploding into a supernova. This then has the core normally collapsing into either a neutron star or a black hole. Blitzars are a hypothetical type of neutron star where they spin so fast that if they slow down, they'll collapse right into a black hole. I do understand that they are theoretical at this point, but some researchers believe that these stars might be an explanation for fast radio bursts should we find that they in fact do exist. In January of 2015, there were seven different events that experts thought could be attributed to Blitzars, but it is thought that they actually might occur once every 10 seconds in our observable universe. The the magnetic field around a blitzar would clear anything prior to it turning into a black hole, which means that no nearby material would fall in upon the initial collapse, which means that there is no burst of gamma rays or x-rays, which is usually seen when other black holes form, and this is exactly why, if they do exist, they are hard to detect. Should we come to find concrete evidence of their existence, these guys would prove incredibly valuable insight into the formation of black holes. In our number 3 spot today, we have Hoag's object. Okay, so there are different shapes to galaxies. That's not the weirdest thing in the world. You know we live in a spiral shaped one, it's beautiful, there are other galaxies called ellipticals that are more like oval shaped, but one galaxy in particular, which is now called Hoag's object, is truly like none we've ever seen. This galaxy has a yellow core, and this core is surrounded by an outer ring of blue stars that are much younger than the core, but in the middle between the two, there's just nothing, and researchers are completely 
stumped as to how this could have formed. The galaxy was first discovered in the 1950s, and since then, there is one leading theory as to how it could have been formed, but it still isn't concrete. Basically, this leading theory suggests that perhaps a small galaxy sped through a larger disk shaped galaxy, which then created this bizarre situation. But the problem with this theory is that there are no signs of any nearby galaxies that could have served as this sort of bullet in this scenario. If that happened, it also would have sped up the core of Hoag's object, but we can observe it as moving quite slowly, so that also rules out this theory. There have been other galaxies discovered that have some similar characteristics to this one, but none share all of the qualities seen in this very bizarre galaxy. In our number two spot today, we have Humea. Back in 2017, this dwarf planet passed between Earth and a distant star, which allowed scientists to get a better look at it, and thus they were able to discover some new findings. Humea sits in an area beyond Neptune that is called the Cooper Belt, and it is actually one of the largest objects inside of the belt. Before the new discoveries in 2017, we already knew that this dwarf planet was weird. I mean, it has kind of a weird elongated shape, it has two moons, and its day only lasts four hours, which means that it's the fastest spinning large object in our entire solar system. It is thought that its fast spin might be responsible for its weird shape, but either way, scientists were quite surprised in 2017 when they realized that this strange planet actually has rings. This means that Humea likely had some sort of collision, and probably not too long ago, relatively speaking. This collision likely happened somewhere from 1 billion to several hundred million years ago, but the search for the origins of these rings brings a whole new mystery to the dwarf planet. In our number one spot today, we have magnetars. These space things are actually a type of neutron star, but what makes them different is that they have this insanely powerful magnetic field. Like we are talking 1,000 times stronger than a regular neutron star, or about a trillion times stronger than the magnetic field that Earth has. That means that these type of stars would have enough magnetic power to wipe every credit card on Earth, even from a distance halfway to the moon. They're the most magnetic stars in the entire universe. This is all very cool and interesting, but it's also important to note that if you were to venture within about 600 miles or a thousand kilometers of one of these stars, you would die very quickly. The magnetic field would destroy your body. It would tear electrons from your atoms, which would then basically turn you into a cloud of monotonic ions or single atoms without electrons. This is all to say that next to black holes, these are one of the most bizarre objects in the entire universe. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have radiation proof bacteria. In 2002, Russian astrobiologists hypothesized that a bacteria here on Earth may have actually evolved on Mars. Dianochus radio Duranus is the most tough bacteria on Earth. It can withstand even the most extreme conditions such as cold, dehydration, vacuum, and acid, but the craziest part is that it is virtually radiation proof. These little microbes can withstand several thousand times the amount of radiation a human can withstand, as well as more radiation than any other bacteria on Earth. You can even find this bacteria on the inside of a nuclear reactor. Scientists did an experiment to see how quickly this bacteria could build up a stronger radiation resistance by zapping the bacteria with enough radiation to kill 99.9% .9 of it, and then leaving the remaining 0.01% to repopulate before zapping it again and repeating the process. It was concluded that it would have taken E. coli thousands and thousands of rounds to build up the same resistance that this hardy bacteria did in only 44 rounds. With this experiment and based on the dose of radiation they gave each bacteria, it would take millions and millions of years to get even close to that amount of radiation they gave the bacteria in one cycle. Since Earth just doesn't carry that amount of radiation, it has led some scientists to speculate that since Mars is virtually unprotected and receives extremely high amounts of radiation, these bacteria may have evolved on Mars and gained their resistance in just a few hundred thousand years, and that they may have been flung off of Mars by an asteroid and then brought to Earth on meteorites. It certainly is just a hypothesis at this point, but really, how else can we explain this random super-powered bacteria that is unlike anything else on our Earth? In our number 9 spot today, we have the USS Princeton UFO. What's a space list without the mention of a UFO sighting? This one took place in 2004. On November 14th of that year, the USS Princeton noticed an unknown aircraft of some sort that was about 100 miles off the coast of San Diego. For two weeks prior to this, the crew had been tracking a strange flying object that would start out at around 80,000 feet before extremely quickly dropping to hover right above the Pacific Ocean. Black 
Black Aces Commander David Fravor and Lieutenant Commander Jim Slate of Strike Fighter Squadron 41 went over in two fighter jets in order to kind of scope out the situation, and when they arrived, they saw what at first appeared to be churning water, while there was an oval shape just below the surface. After this, a white oval shaped object appeared above the water, but it had no markings on it. Like we're talking no windows, nothing that would indicate an engine, no wings, and the infrared monitors on the jets didn't pick up any sort of exhaust. The commander and lieutenant commander tried to intercept this strange aircraft, but it very quickly flew away and reappeared on the monitor 60 miles away. Like when I say quickly, I mean it was moving at three times the speed of sound and over twice the speed of the fighter jets. Like some Top Gun Maverick stuff. So faster than any kind of technology we currently have. We still don't know exactly what this was, but I'll tell you one thing. We definitely don't have that kind of technology. In our number 8 spot today we have the USO. UFO to USO. Daryl Miklos is an explorer who took a deep dive following maps that had been put together by his friend and former astronaut Gordon Cooper. The map Daryl was using was initially made to help identify more than 100 magnetic anomalies in the sea. During one dive at a location within the Bermuda Triangle where everything weird happens, he thought he was going to find an ancient shipwreck, but instead he found something that continues to stump researchers and Daryl himself. He came across a very strange structure that wasn't like anything he had seen before. This structure had long obtrusions which stuck out from the sides, and the whole thing was covered in coral, so whatever it is, it has been down there for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Daryl has said, quote, There's identical formations in three different areas, and they don't look nature made, they don't look man made, certainly nothing I've ever seen based on my experience and I have years of experience at doing this. We've identified multiple different types of shipwreck material. This doesn't match or look anything like that. People have started speculating that this structure may just be the remains of a crashed UFO. If it isn't that, then what else could it be? In our number 7 spot today we have the Antikythera Mechanism. The Antikythera Mechanism is an extremely mysterious discovery that has stumped researchers ever since it was found. This artifact was found 150 feet below the surface of the Aegean Sea in a shipwreck, and it is the oldest kind of computer ever recorded, as it was dated back to the 7th century BCE. The author David Childress likened the finding to if they had found a jet plane in King Tut Tomb. That's how bizarre this discovery really was. Due to the complexity and oddity of the finding, alien enthusiasts have believed for quite some time that it may have been technology that was passed down from some sort of superior being, so aliens. When the artifact was recreated in order to learn about the mysteries it holds, the mechanism was able to calculate the position and running time of each planet. How would they have been able to create this without the use of sophisticated astronomical tools? I'm not saying that this is like concrete proof of alien life, but I don't know. There's just gotta be something else at play here. In our number 6 spot today we have fossilized microbes. This is a piece of evidence that came from 1996 and it is said to have come all the way from Mars. 25 years ago scientists said that they had potentially found what appeared to be fossilized microbes in a lump of Martian rock. This rock was hypothesized to have come off of Mars after some sort of collision that the planet had and then just casually floated around in space for some 15 million years before it ended up in Antarctica in 1984. You know. Just the kind of thing that happens in space. Once the rock was found and analyzed, it was found that it contained organic molecules and small specks of mineralized magnetite, which can sometimes be found in the bacteria here on Earth. Once viewed with an electron microscope, there were signs of bacteria found. Of course, with anything like this, there will always be skeptics, and some have claimed that the magnetite wasn't that similar to those found in bacteria, and some claim that the signs of nanobacteria were just grown in a lab. I'm not a scientist. Scientist, nor have I seen this Mars rock, so I obviously can't tell you who is telling the truth here, but what I can say is that neither of the people who believe this rock came from Mars, or those who claim that it's fake, can prove their point without any kind of doubt, so 
I'll just let you draw your own conclusions on this one. In our number five spot today, we have cork gluon plasma. So basically, scientists believe that right after the Big Bang, there was this sort of really hot, goopy kind of a substance that was created, and it was made up of all different kinds of matter. Everything is moving around at the speed of light, it's hot, it's fast, and it's like cosmic soup. Okay, so experts at the Large Hadron Collider, which is the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator, wanted to recreate this space soup. You know, part of the whole trying to solve the mysteries of the universe's origins kind of thing. When they did this and got the machine to recreate this, they ended up recording the highest temperature ever. Apparently this soup was measured at 9.9 .9 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. We obviously can all understand that that is insanely hot, but just how hot? Well, that is 366,000 times hotter than the center of the sun. In our number four spot today, we have energetic cosmic rays. Energetic cosmic rays are described as high energy protons and atomic nuclei that move through space at nearly the speed of light. There are some that originate from supernova, but there are some that originate from outside of our galaxy, and those ones have scientists wondering where they are coming from and what the source of them is. As these cosmic rays flow into our solar system, their paths are bent by the magnetic fields of both the sun and the earth. Upon impact with earth's atmosphere, these rays produce a shower of secondary particles. Some of these particles do end up reaching earth, but most are intercepted by either the magnetosphere or the heliosphere. The strongest cosmic rays are extremely powerful and they can have energies of over a hundred million times greater than a man-made collider. If you're wondering why you should care about this space mystery, it's because these these things have the power to cause our digital systems to crash, and in our ever increasing digital world, that could cause some major disruptions to our life. That is why we care about how many of their origins remain a complete mystery that has scientists stumped. And also, because shouldn't we just know where these things that are bombarding Earth's atmosphere are coming from? Concerning is definitely the word I'd use, but honestly, what part of space isn't concerning? In our number three spot today, we have Elst Pizarro. This is a weird little object that has been stumping scientists since it was first discovered in 1979. So basically, asteroids and comets tend to be fairly easy to tell apart. I mean, an asteroid is a solid lump of rock and metal and you tend to find them more in the inner solar system, especially in the asteroid belt. And on the other hand, we have comets, which are usually more icy objects that travel from the outer areas of the solar system, and sometimes when they react with the solar radiation, they have those famous tails. So when Elst Pizarro was first discovered, it was orbiting in the asteroid belt, so it was classified as an asteroid. Flash forward to 1996 and closer examination shows that it had a tail like a comet. At first, experts thought that perhaps the tail was a result of some sort of collision, which is not uncommon for asteroids, but when the brightness and structure of the tail changed over time, it became clear that it was more of an ongoing process. Basically, this object showed signs and trademarks of both asteroids and comets, and it truly was a baffling discovery. Basically, the discovery of this object led to an entirely new classification active asteroids. In our number two spot today, we have the fastest black hole. The biggest black hole that we have found so far is said to weigh about 40 billion times the mass of our sun, or about 20 times the size of our solar system. That's so scary. That's so big! Some of the outer slowest orbiting planets in our solar system, like let's take Neptune as an example, orbits at a speed of about 165 Earth years. This huge black hole, the one that's 20 times the size of our solar system, yet it orbits once every three months. Do you know how fast that is? Neptune is considered slow at going 12,148 miles per hour. The outer edge of this black hole is moving at half the speed of light. The crazy thing about black holes this large though, other than how fast they're moving apparently, is that it is believed that they wouldn't necessarily kill you right away if you were to fall into one. In fact, it's thought that you would actually survive. You just wouldn't be able to escape to tell the tale because of that whole nothing escapes the black hole thing that they all have going on. In our number one, spot today we have supermassive black holes. Speaking of black holes, why is there a supermassive black hole at the center of most galaxies? We know that this is often the case, but we just can't quite figure out why. 
Every galaxy's supermassive black hole ranges in size, and we know that a stellar black hole forms from a supernova when the core of the star implodes, but we don't know how a supermassive black hole is formed. Because of the fact that the center of galaxies is where a lot of matter is boxed in, it could happen that supermassive black holes form from a cluster of regular stellar black holes, which all ended up merging together because they were in a tight, confined space at the center of the galaxy. There are other theories as well, such as the possibility of these supermassive black holes being formed during the Big Bang. What I'm trying to get at is, we don't know how these things are formed, or why they are in the center of most galaxies, or even if there were supermassive black holes before the galaxies even existed. Maybe one day we'll find out, but this might just be one of those mysteries that is destined to stay a secret. Thank you.